Hi, I'm Susan Beatty, and I'm here with Luke in our virtual classroom. I had the great pleasure this week of meeting Mark McCarthy, founder of McCarthy's Wildlife Sanctuary, and his wife, Anna. In this interview that you are about to see, Mark shares with me his story of coming to Miami from Michigan at the age of 16 with his bag of rattlesnakes and $5 to his name to apply for a job at the Miami Serpentarium where he worked for some time, along with other experiences with wildlife. Then 31 years ago, Mark started building his wildlife sanctuary. It is now the permanent home to hundreds of native and exotic animals. Some of them have been brought in by wildlife officers who confiscated these beautiful and innocent creatures from previous owners because of neglect, abuse, or illegal possession. Some have been brought there due to injuries and can no longer live in the wild, so they have become ambassadors for education. Others are pets that owners could no longer care for. I hope you will join me as I tour this beautiful, immaculate sanctuary with Mark as he tells me just some of the many stories of his beloved animals. There are three parts to this interview, and I hope you'll watch as each one shows his love and dedication to wildlife. I hope you enjoy them. Hi, I'm Susan Beatty, and I am here today with Mark, the founder of McCarthy's Wildlife Sanctuary. And this is a real treat. I've been wanting to come out here for a long, long time. And I actually taught out here at Acreage Pines Elementary. So this is kind of fun for uh, me to come okay. back out. That was my first job going back into teaching. So Mark's going to take us around, show us the facility and some of the great animals that he has. And uh, let's go. All right, let's go. Parrots are the number one exotic animals that we get in here. Any, you know, thing from cockatoos to African greys up to big old macaws and stuff like that. Um, so, so very animal. often people get them as a pet and for some reason hi, or another. Hi, oh, you yeah. said hi, baby. <laughs> hi, baby. A lot of times people buy these birds when they're young as babies and start raising them up. And as they get older, they get louder mm -hmm. and so some mm -hmm. of these people live in apartments or in condominiums or things like that and you know so these are the things that i teach that parents too need to realize when their kids are asking for you know an animal no matter what it is that you need to think long term yes as because you know even the kids that want the snakes well you know look what happens yes you know they get huge and then they let them out in our canals and then you know, they become the invasive a, species. And you got a problem. So yeah. think ahead. And that's with a lot of things. I think what a lot of people uh, don't understand is they, uh, they get these animals, they see them, for instance, let's say I'm handling the animal or something in a film or something, and, you know, they think, oh, wow, that's so cool, you know. But when you have these kind of exotic animals, you have to constantly handle them to right. keep them handleable, kind of like right. horses. Yeah. Right. You can break a horse and ride a horse, but if you put them out the pasture for a year or two, mm -hmm. you're going to have to break them all over mm -hmm. again. So, we get all kinds of stuff, and this is another exotic animal that comes in here fairly frequently. This is oh a goodness. kinkajou. You're in one of my books. Maybe my rainforest book, I think. Yeah, right? that's probably, yeah they're from Central and South America. This is so exciting. Uh, he's very friendly. Now the problem with some of these animals is when people get them, uh, you know, they're not spending enough time with them. So it really takes uh, quite a bit. Fun. These are cool animals, they got a prehensile tail. And these are sold fairly frequently, you know, for pets. No kidding, yeah. I didn't know that. So, you yeah. know, it's, I mean, if you, you've got to have the right person to keep something like this. 
right. and handle it quite often. If you just leave it in a cage right. and right. you come home from work, you don't handle it well, day that's, after day. Again, like it. any animal, if the parents are going to get it for the child, the child has to understand. So we're, we're, we're doing a lot of films of filming kids with their pets and all the work that's involved. So yeah. that mini work, you know, if you really enjoy the animal, it's not like work, mm -hmm. but the responsibility. So yeah, there's a lot. It's, it's, you know, this is what my whole... And this is a, also a nocturnal animal. But this is a, a marmoset monkey. Mm -hmm. These are from Central and South America. And they're pretty cool animals also, but it's the same story with this stuff. When they get a little bit older, they get a little more aggressive. And um, the macaws, um, they have a green wing and a scarlet. Or a hard one, excuse me, a scarlet. Boy, they're beautiful. Uh, now, Norma Jean, I've had for almost 30 years now. Come on. Ah. Come on. <laughs> she's extremely friendly. She's been to over 7,000 educational programs that I've done over the years. And um, So now, are you doing any virtual for the schools? I the haven't, school? no. I'm just, yeah. with this COVID thing's got it's, everything it's chaotic. Right, right. And it's, so again, you're no longer going physically into the schools, right. but that's why I can bring this to the kids and then... Yeah, I stopped you know. going to schools a few years ago after I got injured and mm -hmm. injured my back and it's just, I can't stand that long yeah. and do the shows. So. But Norma's a good bird. She's been on all my programs. How are you? And I've had her since she hatched out of an egg. Can I have a kiss? Give me a kiss. Mm. Oh. Thank you very much. <laughs> have another kiss. One more. All right. I'll so give you another cute. peanut. You want to hold her? Yeah, Let's use this on here. Now, also with animals such as this, when I go to the shows, um, everything is exactly the same. Every show is exactly the same. The routine's the same. Mm. Once you change that routine, the animals because get like the confused. Am, yeah. Even like Norma Jean, she she only likes to sit on the left arm. You put her on the right arm, Isn't she tends to be a little beautiful. odd. You are so beautiful. So she's close to 30 years old now, awesome. And what's their lifespan? Oh, well, they're over 80 years sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Two, I've seen, I'm not sure which of the uh, species that, they also are used as comfort animals for the, um, for the veterans. Are you familiar sure, with yeah. that at all? Because I thought that was fascinating, not just our, our domestic dogs and whatnot, but they... Yeah, even some things. of the exotics. Are, are the, the exotics, yeah. Are from Australia. Now, the kookaburra will be in my Australia book coming sometime in the near future. So this is fun to be able to see up close. They're real cool birds. They have a really interesting sound. Let me see if I can get them to do it. Usually it needs a higher voice, so I might have to ask you to do it. But... <laughs> really high, though. Right there, if you put Sounds, well, all those jungle noises you hear in the background. See, you have to have a high pitch. Bars. Yeah, it has to be a high pitch. I can't I do think it. There I was a song something. when we were kids. You'd always sing about the kookaburra. I'm gonna have to look that up. Yeah, we would sing it in school. I know that. So that's a pretty good bird. Um, he's got a little bit of a deformed foot, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so that's why he's. And came. he can't live in the couldn't live in the wild. Obviously. Yeah, he's not going to go back to Australia. So he's, yeah, not too, right? He's, he's a little far <laughs> from home. It's a little home. far to go back home. Kookaburra Song by Marion Sinclair. Kookaburra sits in the old gum tree. Merry, merry king of the bush is he. Laugh, kookaburra, laugh, kookaburra, gay your life must be. Kookaburra sits in the old gum tree, eating all the gum drops he can see. Stop. Kookaburra, stop. Kookaburra, save some for me. Kookaburra sits in the old gum tree, counting all the monkeys he can see. Stop, Kookaburra. Kookaburra, stop. That's not a monkey. That's me. Uh, these are African spur-by tortoises. 
another very popular pet store animal. Um, when they sell them in the pet stores, they're usually about no that big. Kidding. And then they get this big. And they ready? get huge. And people don't want them, you know, don't have the room to keep them as they get larger. These are the third largest tortoises in the world, next to the Galapagos and Aldabras. So, I get a lot of these in constantly. Out in this area, a lot of people get them as pets and just put them in their backyard. But these guys will burrow right under a fence, no problem, within a few minutes. So, a lot of them get found, they're brought to us. Sometimes we'll, we'll put out, you know, something on Facebook or something, and people will claim them. And then... So, this is a flight. Uh, this is required by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service in order to have a rehabilitation permit to rehabilitate hawks and owls. Basically, what happens is the hawk comes in injured, depending upon the injury, depends upon whether we're going to rehabilitate it. If it can't go back to the wild, usually you're required to euthanize it. If it can be used for educational purposes and they have certain rules to have a candidate for that, um, then we can use them for educational purposes. So once we get the hawk, let's say we've got one that we're going to rehabilitate. Once it is uh, gone to the vet and everything's checked out, after his injuries healed, we put him in these small little flights here. And these flights are like about uh, 6 by 10. And there we just kind of observe them, you know, make sure their wounds are healing up good. And once they are a candidate to go back to the wild, we then put them in this flight. Basically here in this flight, uh, you can see the two red tail hawks all the way there. Mm -hmm. They're a little jumpy. Yeah, they're going slow. Yeah, be careful. That's good. That one closest to you is a female. She's very yeah. friendly. Friendly. The male's in the back. He's, he's, out. he's that noise he's making is like a warning call. Yeah. yeah. Watch yeah. out! Watch out! The yeah. humans are out. And she's like, I'm cool with this. Just yeah. don't get any closer. <laughs> I'll give you a good little bite. Oh, I bet. Look at this. They want you. Amazing, baby. Beautiful. Beautiful. Oh, there's, there's loose parrots all over the place. Uh, these are all Amazon parrots. Yeah. Uh, there's a few different kinds here. Yeah. This is a blue front. You got two yellow napes over there. Uh, Red-headed conure. You got a double yellow-headed uh, parrot. He's like the boss of the place. His name's, uh, I don't know, I can't believe I can't remember. This one's name is Sephora. She is a two-toed sloth. Uh, you could say, I mean, they don't move super slow, but they're pretty slow. And Sephora is a female. Real cool animals, real mellow. They, they have extremely sharp teeth though, and they can't bite. They eat plants, material, you know, fruits and vegetables. They love hibiscus flowers. And uh, of course, sloshing moves pretty quick compared to other sloths. I've seen. So this is your two-toed sloth, Isophora. Oh my God.